friend and India's pra benefactor, uh, Jyoti Bansal. Hey, good morning, Jyoti. Uh, hi, Amar. How hey, oh, bright and early in San Francisco. We could have just met at the Starbucks close to our house. <laughs> that definitely would have been easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, good, good to have you, and uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, I described you as a as a super successful entrepreneur, but I want to get into uh, the uh, the depth of things here. I know App Dynamics uh, was your first baby, and uh, that was a, a terrific journey. Although it was a long journey, it was not again like the theme that I've been using is it was not an overnight success uh, by any means. Uh, so uh, the questions people have about App Dynamics is how did you and and Deeraj just talked about it as well a little bit. How do you grow that? How do you have that compounding effect? It's not like at App Dynamics you got ten hundred million dollar deals. And you became a company. You sold lots and lots of little deals, right? So take us through your thinking in that area. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, uh, the, the that's a that's a very good question. The the beautiful thing about uh, the modern uh, recurring revenue businesses, which is the subscription software businesses, B two B business that Dynamics was in, uh, that it compounds very quickly. If you have you know annual subscriptions or monthly subscriptions. So you acquire new because then at some point about 80 90 percent of your business will come from the subscriptions you have already sold uh, to to your uh, to your customers in the past right so you have to yeah, so uh, the, the 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 secret uh, of that is that you have to make sure your customers are really happy so you want to acquire more and more customers uh, and they're all you know recurring revenue customers you want to make them very happy so that they are renewing so you don't you, you don't have a leaky bucket from there and you also have uh, to make sure that you uh, that these customers are buying more. So the, the cross sell and upsell becomes so important part of the like you know how you get the the growth to compound. Right? You know I, I, I briefly heard uh, you know Dira's talking about uh, Adobe. Uh, that's how their business grows. Like you know you uh, from one product you sell product number two, product number three, product number four. Your customers are happy and they're buying these subscriptions and they are renewing the subscriptions. Uh, and so at AppDynamics, we took a similar approach, you know, uh, obviously for me at AppDynamics, uh, when I started the company, you know, I, I didn't know anything about sales and marketing. You know, I was an uh, engineer turned um, entrepreneur in my late 20s trying to figure out like, you know, uh, I knew how to build a product and engineering, but I didn't know about anything about sales and marketing. Right? But it, so uh, so I, I, I thought long and hard about and I did a lot of uh, uh, let's say studying of like what would be the different go-to market models for you know for a, for a product like AppDynamics to succeed, and uh, it it really the approach that we ended up doing and which kind of works quite well for these very uh, uh, for these products in the developer or you know sort of the 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 you know um, uh, most of the B two B kind of world as well I would say is that uh, what I call the sandwich strategy that you have to go to the to your end users. Uh, and in your end users, you are marketing them, you are going, getting to them through like content, through Google, uh, you know, search, through all sorts of things, like, right? and the end users have to be happy and like, uh, you know, they have to like your product and you have to reduce the friction, uh, you know, for, uh, for them to get started with your products. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, the end users do not have that much budget or that much money to pay for. Like if you want to have like, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars from a large company, you really cannot sell easily just to the end users, right? So then you have to also have a, you know, uh, you have to go to the decision makers in large companies and sell them, make the business case for them, and you have to build a sort of a structured sales organization to do that, like a sales organization that knows how to do that, you know, salespeople who, uh, you know, who, uh, who, who can do that systematically, making the argument for what is the return of investment on buying your, your product, you know. But you all, if you if you have the end users who are already using you and they're already happy with you, your product because they just could get started for free, uh, that makes your case so much stronger and it's so much easier to go to a decision maker and say, hey, you have these you know two hundred people in your company already using our product and you know and and these people somewhere also asking for like you know buying the the product for company wide and enterprise scale and things like that. So then it becomes much easier to go you know and do sort of the so. Uh, the, the growth formula comes to like, you know, if, if you go to the end users uh, and convince them and, you know, they are very happy with using your product and you reduce the friction for them to do that. And then you start going to the, from the top to the decision makers on 
this is why you know everyone in your company needs you know say a dynamic software or some or like you know some other software right then it's it becomes you can you can acquire these customers once you acquire them you got to keep them happy and successful and 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 if they're happy and successful it's 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 kind of interesting how how much more you can sell to them if you're building good products uh, you know product going from product number 1 to product number 2 to product number 3 you know you can sell them that like right, right, all right? if if you look at in the public markets right now like in the the especially in the b2b kind of space most companies who are growing extremely well they have this very high net dollar retention rate uh, as people call the you know because becoming one of the very core metrics now which is really about like how much like a, a customer who ha- who were who was paying you hundred dollars a year ago how much are they paying you today and normally you want uh, like in the one thirty one forty percent ten dollar retention rate so customer was paying you hundred dollars that in in a year they should be paying you hundred thirty hundred forty dollars uh, so more than what they were paying a year ago because they are buying more products from you or more licenses from you and more things from you. If you do that, the the compounding effect happens like very very rapidly. No, that's yeah. terrific. And you had a great run at uh, App Dynamics. You got acquired, but uh, you didn't wait too long. You you kind of then spun out a bunch of things, right? You have Big Labs, which I guess is your mother's chip, and from that you've uh, kind of spawned companies uh, like Harness. But you also started a venture firm, Unusual Ventures. Take us through your thinking at that time. Uh, as to you know what was on your mind and why you had this dual strategy. So, so uh, you know, am I remember like you know when uh, right after uh, you know I sold App Dynamics, uh, you know I met up and we were having this discussion on what's uh, what what's next, and it's it's always a challenge uh, like you know what's next like you know I didn't I didn't know what's next after after App Dynamics and. Uh, uh initially my thought was you know they had, you know it's a, it was a great successful run i can probably retire and i that was my first attempt like let's just go and try to retire and uh and relax and um, and i tried that for about 6 months you know like which included traveling everywhere i wanted to travel and you know just uh, being on a beach for some quite some time etc but you know during the period i thought pretty hard about like what do i really like to do retirement is not something i was ready for what is what do i really like to and to me it came down to like you know i really enjoyed the building app dynamics you know build it, so you know which is which really came down to i i love building great product you know uh, selling in the market competing in the market and building a business around it so it was it was a great fun ride so it, you know and i wanted to do it again so that was the uh, you know that was definitely my first passion i realized the second was i also wanted to help other founders you know so like you know i i you know i was a just a software engineer turned founder and there's a lot of uh, you know learnings and struggles that i have to go through as i as i you know did at dynamics and uh i see a lot of other founders in a very similar uh, situation and so i wanted to help them and you know mentor them and you know uh and maybe share some of my learnings if they are helpful in in, in any way so that definitely was my the second thing i realized i was passionate about The third thing I did realize I was passionate about was philanthropy. Like I wanted to spend time in philanthropy, uh, uh, especially you know in in India because that's you know that's where uh, you know you see a lot of the causes that that I, you know some that, that I was uh, passionate about. What I did realize, like you know, to do a great job at you know at these, I have to pick two, and I picked the first two for the so for for a ten for the next ten twelve years, I'll pick the first two. and uh, and then i'll spend you know maybe i'll as i get more time i can i can i can focus on philanthropy as well and so that's where you know i i started you know but to start a company i i started my second company harness right but to start a company you need to to research first like you know is this the you have an idea but is this the right idea you know do we have the, is is this uh, your thesis of this idea is it valid you know is there really a problem is there really a market is your technology solution really differentiated all of those things right so that's where i started big labs as such sort of my research lab but i could bring in some ideas that i have that you know the ideas that i have uh and just research and experiment with those and uh with the goal that like you know the ideas that uh, that i do think uh you know that past that research which i think like i could convert them into a billion dollar company easily you know i could uh, you know uh I could create a major competitive advantage from a technology perspective. 
you know, I can see a path to, uh, you know, to building a bigger platform company, a much bigger platform company than, uh, let's say, Aptanamix on those. I will spin them out as a, as a, as a company. So Harness was the first company I spin out of out, out of Big Labs, uh, and the second company I spin out spin out this year. Uh, it's a company called Traceable in the in the you know uh, sort of modern cybersecurity world. Uh, you know from from Big Labs as well. Uh, and so it's really what that does it that allows me to continue my passion of uh, building great products and building companies around, around those. Like right? so, you know, at the core of uh, of everything, I'm a, I'm a product guy. You know, I, I, I love to build, uh, really good products, you know, uh, you know, design good products, solve, solve problems with good products. And, uh, and, and so these, these are also problems that I'm passionate about. Like what Harness does, you know, for, for, for a lot of people, it might be boring, but, you know, I'm pretty passionate about, like, uh, about how do we simplify, you know, the life of every software developer and every software developer, how can we make it easy for them to, Ship code that they write, and it's a, it's a complex process right now. Like you know, they they write code, but you know, getting that code to be shipped, it's a, it's it's complex and messy, which uh, which uh, you know, no no software engineer likes. And really, the the heart of harness is to solve the problem. Like, how do we make make it easy and easier? Uh, same with my other company, Traceable, which is like you know, how do we secure all the code? It's all about like you know, the people are writing all this like trillions and trillions of lines of software code, and you get all the hacks and. Uh, cyber attacks and everything that's happening constantly right so how do you uh, think of you know securing uh, software and securing code at the, at the at the next level right so it's a problem also that i'm i'm i'm, I'm passionate about. So it makes it easier if you have problems that you're passionate uh, you're, you're passionate about uh, and and give, give us a little context on the sizes of the two companies now you've spun them out uh, how big is each one and and are you running both companies or you've got other people uh, well, I, I, you know, I'm I'm running both companies as CEO. I do have, uh, you know, obviously very um, uh, very seasoned, experienced management teams in both both companies. Uh, Harness is uh, about 300 employees now, and um, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, and uh, traceable is as small as about 40 employees right now. Great. And then and talk to us about the other side, unusual ventures. You're also a venture capitalist at the same time. So yeah, give us your, you know, how, how, do you, how do you spend 24 hours in a day? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, definitely um, the other side is the, the venture fund that I started uh, with, uh, with my co-founder. Um, uh, we named it Unusual Ventures because we wanted to think of early stage capital in a very different, unusual kind of way. So it, the core of it, it comes down to the other passion that uh, that that I had is like how do we help founders when they are just starting and and my main thesis uh, has been that the founders need most help in the first two three years when you come up with an idea you have a PowerPoint or like maybe one or two pages of uh, of of a, of a business plan and something and you want to get the business going from there you want to learn you know how to get your you know first 10, 15, 20 customers, you know, your, we call it the, the zero to the first million of revenue. Your first million dollars of revenue, how do you, how do you build out the product? How do you get your messaging and positioning right? How do you get, even build an initial team? So what I wanted to do was to very systematically build a company that focuses on that. Or like, you know, if we, a user ventures, we call it, we think of it as a startup selling a product. And the product is how do we, how do we help founders go from zero to the first million dollars? You know, and and how do we teach founders and help founders during the process, right? So, so what what that's you know, so a lot of what we do at Unusual Ventures comes from that with that kind of mission, right? So it's a very different kind of venture firm that we are very actively involved with these early founders. Uh, you know, we help them recruit the teams, we help them like you know sell, we help them you know uh, do you know figure out their marketing and messaging, we help them figure out their product market fit. And once the companies start getting to a million dollar or so revenue, that's when we start to you know back off our involvement in, in these. And then we go to the next batch and we kind of help them through that. So it's a very involved language kind of model. Uh, and so it was very successful. Like, you know, we, we started our first fund with $165 million um, uh, about, you know, uh, two and a half, three years ago. And it, it was quite successful pretty rapidly. Uh, we, we launched our second fund uh, at unusual uh, $425 million uh, last year. And, you know, we are being able to help a lot of founders. And uh, so, you know, to me, as long as I'm passionate about it and it's, uh, it doesn't feel like, uh, 
you know, something that, that you're just doing it for, for the sake of doing it. You know, it's, it's something that, 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 uh, that makes you, uh, you know, happy and fulfilled. It's easy to find time and do it. Right. So that's, that's, uh, uh, that's how I, I, uh, you know, I find, I find time for it. No, that's fantastic, man. You have so much energy. I'm, <laughs> I think you might end up starting five or six companies and running all of them. So uh, I, I see some other role models out there like an Elon Musk where he's running multiple companies and, and other people are also starting to, to, to kind of have that kind of an approach. So, so on the unusual venture side, um, you know, how many companies have you worked with so far and how does one... Uh, talk to unusual ventures. What is the process? Okay. Uh, so at Unusual, we have invested in about uh, 60 to 70 companies so far. And, uh, you know, we have two kinds of investments. One is like a very deeper engagement model. Uh, 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 um, and we invest somewhere in the, I would say like, you know, four to seven million dollars in the, in, in the, in a, in a seed or a pre series A kind of round. And then we have a lighter model where we invest smaller amounts, like, you know, a million dollars or so. And uh, the companies can become part of our unusual academy and we will provide all the, the learning services, etc. Uh, so what we look for at unusual uh, are founders who are very, very passionate about the problem that they're trying to solve. Like they, they, that the, the core of why they start, want to start a company is that they have some kind of a unique insight and uh, you know, in, in some problem, and they are they are domain experts or some core experts around the you know around the pain. So they they experience the pain. They are experts in it. They have a core in some unique insight around how to solve it. They are passionate about it. And then we, the second thing we look for is like you know, are they thinking big? Are these the founders who will think big for the you know for the? They're not looking for like a one year, two year, three year you know overnight success. There's nothing like that. Like are they are they going to think big and build it for the for the next seven years, ten years, you know, and build it into 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 a, or try at least try to build it into a massive company. So those are the main things that we look at at, at unusual. Uh, and we we will help the founders learn, and you know that's our whole model. Like you will know, partner with them closely, we'll coach them about you know things that they don't know very well about, like go to market, selling, marketing, you know, recruiting, you know, uh, fundraising, and we'll help them in the trenches there. Right. So to for for a founder to uh, to reach out to us, there are many ways. You can go to our website, you know, contact us through there. You know, you can connect to one of our team members through 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 LinkedIn. You know, there are there are you know in in, in the world of tech, there are everyone is separated just by a few degrees of freedom. So uh, you know, uh, just a few. There's not two. Uh, you know, I'm sure uh, you can find someone. Uh, you know, who would who would have uh, you know some kind of a connection with uh, with one of the team members at at Unusual. But any of the mechanisms would work. You know, uh, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and and share what you're working on. And if you have, well, if you if you're interested in working with so. Great. Uh, so, what about the entrepreneur? You know, today we're uh, you know the thousands of people watching us from India and other countries. <laughs> plans of how you help them, how you can look at those things at this time. Uh, I might cut off slightly. Can you repeat the question? Uh, so, how do you help uh, entrepreneurs who are in India, uh, you know, in the in the unusual venture model? Sure. Okay. So, uh, in the unusual ventures model, you know, we we uh, like to create a lot of content. We like to create a lot of material. We like to create, so we could uh, we can help the entrepreneurs. You know, entrepreneurs could be anywhere. They could be in uh, in US, in India, in Europe. You know, and uh, we, you know, the, the interesting thing now is uh, most startups could be very global. I think one thing that this pandemic and uh, COVID uh, uh, sort of uh, forced every business in the world is to learn very quickly how to operate remotely. So now if you look at, at this point, like, you know, I, I could be running, you know, like, you know, both of my companies uh, from anywhere in the world. Like, doesn't I don't need to be in, in San Francisco anymore. I could be in... Uh, I could be in Bangalore. I could be on a on a you know on an island somewhere. I could be anywhere. Like it doesn't really make a difference now. Like you know, it's like if you don't have offices, you are mostly working remotely. Uh, you know, so the good thing is that we are the location is becoming more and more immaterial now. And if if uh, so, the it will be, as a, as a world we are already on that path. Uh, now with COVID and pandemic, that just completely accelerates. 
So you could be a, you know, a, an American startup sitting out of India very easily today or an Indian startup sitting out of US now very, very easily because it's the, you're, where you are as a founder, as an entrepreneur doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Right? So when we look at unusual ventures, obviously we, we like to make sure that we can help the companies. Uh, you know, so the, it, it's, for us, it's not just about investing capital. It's about really helping companies. So that's our primary criteria. So the things that we can help with, we do, do invest in. You know, and we have some areas of focus, uh, you know, we, when we look at the, the B2B uh, and, you know, software infrastructure, deep tech, that's kind of where we, we have our primary focuses. We do make some uh, consumer oriented investments uh, and the consumer oriented investments, again, depends on our team. Our team have experts uh, of making consumer oriented investments and mostly in the American markets. Uh, and the, the consumer investments are a bit more market focused, geography focused. Because you have, if you're designing something for the for the Indian consumers versus the American consumers, and they don't easily translate right away, uh, well, the the B two B and the deep tech that's that doesn't apply. Like you know, you can build it, build the product, and sell anywhere, right? So for those ones, we do we we look look, look at companies quite globally, uh, you know, without any distinction. Fantastic, uh, 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 you've been a fountain of knowledge and uh, wisdom, and you're so passionate. And that comes across, I think, to all of them watching out there to kind of do their stuff, work hard, and follow your advice. So uh, once again, uh, we'll come back to you next year and find out how things are going. But with unusual ventures, uh, big bad, RNS, traceable, and maybe next year you'll have two or three more for us to talk about it. So, so th thank you so much. Great. All right. Hey, uh, thank, thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.